Zillow is now forecasting that existing home sales will fall to a 29 year low in 2024. On top of that, I have an update for you guys regarding mortgage rates as well, because this will likely impact um, close home sales and potentially home prices this year as well. Um, also share Zillow's forecast through March of 2025 for many U.S. metros. Real estate is local, right? Some metros are forecasting for home values to decrease, but in contrast for other areas, they're calling for gains in home values over the next 12 months. So I have a lot to share in today's video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I post frequent housing market updates so you guys can make a more informed decision about whether to buy or sell a house right now. With that said, let's begin today's video and I appreciate you. This was posted on uh, April 15th, which is today. It says Zillow's home value forecast calls for a 1.9% increase in home values in 2024. This is slower than the long-term average. So normally over the long-term, over the past several decades, home values tend to increase in the range of three to 5% and not 1.9%. So home value is still increasing, according to Zillow here, but still well below uh, historical averages. Also, according to Zillow, this is welcome news for first-time home buyers because of course we saw home prices absolutely skyrocket um, right at the onset of COVID. And now they're forecasting for only a 1.9% increase in home values. This, by the way, is an upward revision in their forecast from one month ago, which at that time they called for home values to increase by 0.9%. Now their new forecast is uh, quite a bit higher than that as well. They also say here with interest rates still elevated, the modest upward revision is mostly the result of a slowdown in the growth of newly listed houses. So again, I have an update for you guys regarding rates because rates increase big time on Monday, which is today. But on top of that, what they're mentioning right here is that new listings are not absolutely skyrocketing, which of course would put big downward pressure on home prices in the long term. So we're not seeing that. In fact, they're saying that the um, annual or year over year increase in the number of newly listed houses is actually decreasing um, as of late. So I'll share that with you guys here in a little bit. Let's have a look at rates as of Monday though. Increase is 7.44%. That's a 14 basis point increase compared to Friday. And right now at 7.44%, that's a five month high. The highest rates we've had going back to mid November of 2023. Jumbo, 7.6%. FHA and VA loans is just under 6.9%. Additionally, one year ago, we're looking at an average 30 year fix for people with great credit again at 6.5%. This is an increase of 94 basis points or 0.94 percentage points compared to one year ago. Um, also, something I found to be um, interesting as well, I didn't know that uh, they actually provided um, rates going back to the 1980s. Normally, when I click on this right here, max, it only went back to, I think it was uh, the early 2000s. In any case, I noticed this today, and I want to share this with you guys, because the run-up in rates that we've seen ever since um, the beginning of 2021 is quite remarkable, to say the least. So looking at um, average rates um, back in late 1981, the average 30-year fix, 18.29%. That's basically a credit card uh, interest rate, absolutely crazy. But of course, when accounting for the fact that home values have increased so much um, right now, uh, the uh, rates we're, we're seeing right now still makes it less affordable today, even though rates have decreased so much uh, since the 1980s. In any case, um, besides the run-up in rates we saw in the early 1980s, um, we haven't seen this run-up in rates um, that we've seen in 2021 through this year. So for example, back in August of 2021, the average 30-year fix was at 2.9%. Then by the time we hit uh, November of 2022, it rose to 6.85%. And now again, um, as of um, April so far, on average for the month, we're at 7.16%. So 
So in any case, uh, the rise in rates over the past several years has been quite remarkable, especially when looking at rates going back to the early 1980s. In any case, getting back to Zillow's forecast here, uh, they're talking about the uh, increase in their home value forecast went from 0.9% to a growth rate of 1.9% because they saw a slowdown on the year-over-year -year change in the number of people deciding to list their houses or a decrease in the number of new listings. So here is a report from Redfin, not Redfin, Zillow, uh, which is for March. So March, new listings increased by 3.7% compared to March of 2023. That was an increase, but not as, um, as much compared to February. February, the year-over-year -year increase was a gain of 20.8%. In other words, what Zillow is saying here is that we're not seeing this rapid rise in new listings, at least on a year-over-year -year basis. And because of this uh, uh, you know, slowdown that we saw in March, that will likely impact inventory levels and, of course, impact potentially home sales and home values in the weeks and months ahead. In other words, if new listings were basically going like this, you know, skyrocketing, um, then that would imply we, we would see downward pressure on home prices. But... We're seeing actually just the opposite of that, according to Zillow. But I did find some, you know, differing data though. So according to Realtor.com for the month of March, um, in, or sorry, for the month of February, I went back one month to see how what, how the uh, the number of newly listed houses had changed. So in February, the number of newly listed houses rose by 11.3 percent, but they announced in March it increased to 15.5 percent. So again, I like to share multiple sources of data on the channel. So what Zillow has seen regarding new listings is different compared to Realtor.com. Also looking at Redfin's uh, website as well regarding new listings, uh, that increased by 8.4% uh, year over year. Um, it is going up higher compared to 2023, but we're still well below uh, 2022 as well as 2021. Going back to Zillow's real estate market predictions, they also provided this map as well. Uh, this is their um, home value forecasts compared to or going through March of 2025. And here's their key. Areas in blue or green aqua are areas in which home values potentially could decrease through March of 2025. Areas in yellow, orange, and red are areas in which home values will increase potentially uh, through next year. So the biggest uh, change I saw was this right here. New Orleans down by 4.2%. In contrast, Knoxville, Tennessee increasing by 6.1%. You also can zoom in, and I'll provide a, a link to this in the video description below here. Let's take a look at Northern California. So home values expected to decrease by 1.3% in uh, San Francisco. Uh, San Jose down by 0.7%, whereas Sacramento up by 0.4%. Fresno up by 1.6%. Bakersfield up by 2.7%. Uh, also um, Oxnard up and also Los Angeles also up by 1.2%. San Diego, the median sold price there around $1 million. Now they're forecasting a gain of 3.6% uh, and also a gain of 3.5% in Phoenix, Arizona. Now going just to the east here, let's have a look at Texas. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, Dallas, Texas up by 1.3 compared to San Antonio down by 0.2% and up by 0.3% in Austin, Texas. Uh, McAllen, Texas, up by 3.9, whereas Houston, up by 0.2%. And assuming now here, the areas in which home values will increase the most is a lot of parts in uh, the southern metros, as well as the northeast. And I know a lot of my viewers are located in Florida. Let's have a look at Florida real quick, and they'll move on and talking about home uh, sales. So in Florida, uh, Tampa, Florida, up by 3.6%. Uh, through March of 2025, Miami up by 2.9, Lakeland, Florida up by 2.9. So most of these metros 
Uh, they're forecasting for home values to increase over the next 12 months. All right, let's change gears uh, slightly here and talk about their forecast for existing home sales in 2024. They're now calling for 4 million and 60,000 existing home sales in 2024, slightly below 2023's levels at 4.09 million. I made this um, a you know, nerdy Excel file here to show how uh, the amount of existing home sales they're calling for compares to years past. And I got this data from NAR, by the way. So the forecast, 4,060,000. That'd be a decrease of 1% compared to one year ago. What happened one year ago, uh, we had 4,090,000. That was the fewest number of existing home sales in America since 1995. In other words, that was a 28-year low. Two years prior to that, back in 2021, we had the highest amount since 2006 or a 15-year high. So in two single years, or two single years, in two years, we went from a 15-year high in sales down to a 28-year uh, low. In any case, if we had a 4 million and 60,000 uh, close home sales this year, that would be a decrease of 24% compared to 2019. On top of that, the median number of close home sales since the year of 2000 is just under 5.3 million. This means if we have just over 4 million sales this year, we'd be missing approximately 1.2 million fewer compared to the long run average. Going back to Zillow's um, housing market forecast, the reason why Zillow believes that we'll have uh, approximately a 29 year low in home sales in 2024 is because of, of course, elevated rates, but also on top of that, leading indications of home sales in the coming months suggest continued softness. So for example, looking at, looking at these leading indications, uh, let's have a look at pending home sales. So pending home sales, according to Redfin, are down by 2.8% year over year. But on top of that, the uh, yellow line right here is this year, uh, the current levels of pending home sales is at least a three-year low during this time frame, lower than last year, than 2022, as well as 2021. So because the level of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers is still at very low levels, this implies that close home sales in the next one or two months will also remain muted as well. In addition, let's have a look at applications for um, uh, home loans to buy houses. So one month ago, this is from the MBA, uh, for the week ended March 8th, the seasonally adjusted purchase index, which is a measure of the amount of people submitting loan applications to buy houses, that fell by 11% from the pre previous year. However, in the report that was uh, announced uh, last Wednesday, that actually got worse. It went from down 11%, now it's at <laughs> down 23%. So big picture here, we have a three-year low regarding pending home sales during this time frame, according to Redfin. But on top of that, the level of people submitting loan applications to buy houses went from uh, down 11% year over year. Now it's down a whopping 23% on a year-over-year -year basis. Additionally, looking at this chart, according to investing.com, here's the MBA's purchase index over the past um, 12 months. You can see this, we're not seeing this um, you know, typical um, upswing during the uh, spring home buying season. We saw an uptick in uh, December, as well as um, some, a couple of weeks here in uh, January. But ever since then, more or less on this downward uh, swing here. So this implies that, again, if we're seeing a lack of people um, submitting loan applications to buy houses, this implies that close home sales in the weeks and months ahead will also remain very low as well. And with that said, please come below with your real estate market predictions through 2025. Do you believe that Zillow is gonna be right regarding this? A rise in home prices and also a decrease in home sales? Please leave me a comment below. I appreciate you guys watching today's video. Like and subscribe. Also, if you guys want a real estate agent referral, check out my website, which is realestateteamfinder.com. I'll provide a link in the video description below for that as well. Anyways, hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.